Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks across North America. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT from weatherrisk.com, the colonel of fusion, the captain of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. It's a Thursday morning at uh, 11 a.m. here on the East Coast, uh, 8 a.m. on the Pacific Coast. Wanted to do this edition of This Week in Weather Wednesday afternoon and evening, but teenagers being teenagers and having numerous crises, or as a crisis I, uh, wasn't able to get that done. So now we're doing it here on Thursday, so lots to talk about in this week in weather. First, we'll be talking about a possible tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico, a uh, possible first coastal storm of the season for the East Coast. The rain's returning to the Midwest, warm and mild for October, at least the first half of the month, and it looks like a weak El Nino is coming. Looks that way to me. So let's get right to it. First, we'll start up and taking a look at the system from yesterday. This is the system, the tropical uh, disturbance. I think it's 95L that was approaching the Yucatan Peninsula. I've highlighted it in yellow so you can see it quite nicely. Uh, the system looked pretty impressive. But the new satellite picture this morning clearly does not show that. It shows a much weaker system there over the uh, Gulf of Mexico, over the Yucatan, and, which to be expected, you know, as it's going to come out. It's going to, uh, over the Yucatan, it's going to look a lot weaker here and here. In fact, there's actually more convection that's developed over in this area, which may be another system to worry about down the road. But it definitely looks a lot weaker than it did yesterday. And that's important because yesterday, the European Energy FS were both developing this system, pulling it up along the cold front uh, as sort of a hybrid tropical storm, a coastal storm, and showing a pretty good rain event here. The map on the left-hand side, as you can see uh, here, uh, is the GFS. This is from yesterday. See the, uh, the 28th, uh, excuse me, Monday 8 p.m. There's the storm right there. This is the uh, European, again, notice European there, as so you can see it, uh, for on the 8 p.m. of the 29th. But they were arguing over the timing. They both had the same solution. But that's all based upon the system coming north and holding together. Now, this is the uh, current uh, um, hurricane guidance from early this morning, actually from the 12Z run. And you can see the development in the western Gulf of Mexico. Some of the models taken to Mexico, some taken up to the north. Uh, none of them make a big deal out of it. And this is the uh, Euro, this is the GFS ensembles, which all generally take it to the north because it, it sees the cold front coming through the Midwest and into the lower plains. So there's a weakness there in the atmosphere, and it gets pulled northward. All the models, you can see there's a definite general trend here uh, to take this uh, system northward, as you can see up this way, definitely up this way. Now, I don't know if that's right. It seems reasonable to me, a reasonable solution, but... Who knows? Now, one of the reasons why we're not getting development here is because of the 200 millibar uh, vertical velocity, potential vertical velocities. In other words, rising and sinking air. Now, this is in the Gulf of Mexico. There's no African dust here. So why is this system falling apart? Well, one of the reasons is because we're not getting any of that green stuff. This is, look, at, let me show you what I'm talking about here. This is as of September 5th. You see the date here? Look, September 5th, right? Okay. All we have in this stuff is all this brown stuff in here. This is sinking air. Okay, All the good stuff is over here and down in here. We're not getting any of this rising motion coming in to the Atlantic Basin. We have it all summer, and we're not getting in September. Now, that's September 5th. This is the new one. Let's take a look at the new one, September uh, 17th. And what do we have? Again, remember brown those brown crap? See this? Okay, the brown, This is September 17th. And what do we have in here? Sinking air throughout all the Atlantic. Nothing developing. So we're not getting this, the good green stuff. We're getting sinking air, which is suppressing the thunderstorms, which is inhibiting development. Clearly what's going on in the Gulf and the Western Caribbean is not because of dust. So there's got to be something else going on there. So you can only use the dust argument for so long before you run into trouble here. So ob obviously the East Coast uh, threat is weakening as the tropical system is weakening. We end up just with an enhanced cold front. Now this is the uh, European model from uh, yesterday, the 12Z run. I want to show you the atmosphere, what it looked like here. Now we can see definitely the uh, big trough here is still setting up over the eastern portions and uh, the western portions of North America. You can see this whole configuration here. See this? There's the low right there. There's another one here. And what's happening is here, here's our trough. You see it there? So the flow is splitting because of the block here. So all the cold air is coming down the west coast of British Columbia. And the U.S. or the jet stream is all to the north. So this is mild air. This is all very, very mild conditions here. And as a result, as we go to late September, there's no hint of any sort of frost or outbreak at all. And, uh, I mean, it's, that's pretty obvious. You can see for the sort of pattern. Now, um, as we go 
the next slide this here is uh, for day seven this is yesterday's run but we can clearly see you know, the European may be overdoing this a little bit but the European as you can see has a big upper low right in here you see that there is the vortex over Alaska so there you go so this this trough here means you have to have a ridge here which is what we have and that's a very mild pattern so all the cold there is way up in here and then over in Siberia so there's no real serious cold air anywhere close to the U.S. Canada border in this sort of pattern. And nor is it going to be through the rest of September. That much is pretty obvious. And this is the GIA, this is the European, um, this is from this morning. And, and now what's happened here is, uh, as you can see, uh, we have one big low which develops here in, in, um, off in Newfoundland. You see this system here? So as a result, when this system develops, it has to do this and turn out to sea. And there it is, our potential East Coast system, but it's heading out to sea because of this system right here. You, this one, the one from the south cannot come up the coast with the one over Maine or Nova Scotia. You follow me? And that's especially true with all this energy coming down here, the west coast of Canada into British Columbia and into the Pacific Northwest. So uh, that's the problem with this. So the system for, in terms of a big storm for the East Coast next week, is looking less and less likely. This is the European from this morning. You can see it's got a weak wave here, much different from what I had yesterday. You can see this weak wave right in here. Um, there's the other system up here. You can see it in here. And as a result, it goes like this. It can't come up the coast. Now, if that system over Nova Scotia is gone, we have a different setup. But right now, that's what it's looking like. And this is the GFS from early this morning. And you can see it 84 hours out. It has no system at all. Why? Well, it's pretty obvious why. We can see that the, uh, let me call it up here so you can see it very clearly. The tropical system has now moved inland on the GFS. We call all the models taking it inland. So there's just a cold front coming through here. That's all there is. Little wave of low pressure on it, cold front off the coast, boom, gone. The 6E GFS showing the same sort of thing. Nothing. There's no development in the Gulf, no big low on the coast. Just a cold front, a couple of weak waves. You can see it right here. There's our cold front right there coming through couple of weak waves on the front, some nice showers in the East Coast. That's it, over and done with, not a big deal, because the entire tropical system falls apart and or dies in Mexico, according to the GFS. Now, this is the, uh, G this is the European from yesterday. Again, just gives you the general idea of the pattern. Here's our trough on the West Coast. Very clearly, I've highlighted it so you can see it. Trough here, ridge there. Trough here, ridge there. Pretty basic pattern. Nice and cold in the Pacific Northwest, warm east of the Rockies, Relative to normal, uh, you know, not 90s, not 100, but relative to normal as we move towards the end of September. And there's a big low over Siberia and Alaska. That's the pattern right there, folks. Now, there are some advantages to this pattern. I mean, this, this, you're not going to see a lot of cold air build up in, in Canada or early season cold air outbreaks, but there are some advantages. We'll get to that down the road. This is the European from this morning for the next five days. Look at the rain here. Very impressive. Look at all this rain in here. Wow. Very impressive here. Um, and we, you know, that's not, maybe that's not unexpected given this sort of pattern. And this is, uh, you know, now if we look day 10 down the road, this is the uh, European here at uh, day 10. And again, the same sort of pattern. There's our trough. Here's our ridge. There's the big upper low over Alaska and Siberia right in here. So all the cold air is in this area here. And this is all mild Pacific air. So no cold air outbreaks as we go into October at all that I can see. No hint of the pattern getting cold at all. And remember, each day as we go towards October, the normals start dropping. You follow? So obviously, uh, you know, 65 degrees or 70 degrees in early September, not a big deal. As we get into October, that's a pretty warm day for some people. So that's kind of what we'll be facing here. And this is um, uh, the day 10 rainfall amounts here. As you can see, uh, day 5 to day 10, all the rains off the southeast coast, light rains here over uh, south central Canada, pretty dry for everybody else. Uh, this is the uh, European Ensemble at day 10 from yesterday afternoon. And what we can see are some several important features. Let me highlight this for you. First, see the huge vortex here? Enormous over Siberia. Trough over western, eastern Europe, I should say, in Russia, another one on the east coast. So here's our ridge. Now what in here, look at the lines here. You see these lines? This represents, let me call it up again so you can see it very clearly. This represents a very strong Pacific jet, which is racing across North Central Pacific, going to slam at Canada. That means the trough is going to stay on the West Coast into the first portion of October, and temperatures will be above normal over the plains and Midwest on the East Coast. Now, 
On the other hand, you have a lot of cold air over Siberia, and that's going to help produce a lot of snow early in the season for Siberia. So they can move into a pretty good pattern there. This is the day 10 GFS. It has a bit more rain in the 6 to 10 day over the upper plains and the, and the upper Midwest, but that's about, that's about it. Uh, very similar, just a dispute over the rainfall patterns here. Now let's take a look at the MJO in October for 2013. Here's the MJO. They both, uh, the European models here, uh, the weeklies and the uh, daily European, they both take in the, fa in the area 6. You can see that right in here, area 6. And what does that look like in terms of the pattern? Well, the ones from, now that these folks from Albany, they also, by the end of September and October, also have it going into, as you can see very clearly, into phase six in here. Again, what does that look like with respect to the overall pattern? This is the uh, September pattern here for uh, phase six, if it is in September or October. We'll look at that in a second. You can see a big block here, a big huge low over uh, Scandinavia, above normal heights, a lot of blocking pattern in Canada, no way of getting cold air you can see the jet stream is following this pattern here of doing this and then down here and then here and then here and then here and here and here and here and here and so on and so forth so that's so that's all the cold air is locked up in canada that sort of pattern this this one here is for uh we'll do october in a second i, just, I think it went backwards here yeah. and uh this is uh the 240 again the extent you can see all that pacific energy coming uh eastward from 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 uh, Kamchatka in Japan, very strong Pacific jet on the way. Now, for the winter's lover out there, there's one good thing about having the early season polar vortex over eastern Siberia. It means there's a lot of heavy snow cover, a lot of cold air is likely to develop early in the season in Siberia and Eurasia. And that's important because that helps determine the winter pattern later on. Recall the autumn and the winter last year. Remember how warm it was over most of the CONUS? early in the autumn, the first half of the winter. But the data showed a big buildup of cold air and snow in Siberia and Eurasia. And that told me when the pattern was going to flip that the stormy and cold interval, once it moved into place, would last for a long time. And it lasted into March, April, and May in some locations over North America. Now, this is the pattern for October. We can clearly see that it indicates in phase six some sort of east coast storm potentially. But there's no way of getting the cold air down from Canada in this sort of pattern here. Everything is blocked up over uh, the Arctic region. And we can see this on the CFS showing this nicely. Now this here is the uh, rainfall forecast for October. This is, now take a look at the date here. See this? Okay, look how wet it was over the Midwest and the East Coast. This is the new one. Look how dry it is. Dramatic flip. Why? Because the data has changed. That's why. We had a different pattern coming in from August than we did in September. So obviously the model has to reflect that. These are the temperatures. Interestingly enough, it can see pretty warm from August, you know, early from mid-August, what it was showing for October to what it's showing now for October, pretty warm. Interestingly enough, this is here for January, January and in early August, we could see it had a lot of cold air in Canada that was beginning to come down, and uh, normal temperatures for the Midwest and the East Coast, and we see that again in the, um, excuse me, in the late January, here in September, looking at here in January. Now, this is for uh, February, we see a lot of cold air. Back in August, the forecast for February, we still see that for February. So that's kind of interesting. We'll see if that actually happens. Now, the El Nino, and let's talk of the CFS. IRS models are way off. Let me show you why. Uh, the European model has been showing a lot of consistent signals for El Nino. Now, this is from um, June. You can see some of the models are showing a weak El Nino. Uh, this is July. Some of the models showing a weak El Nino. Not a lot of them. But as we go down the road, we can see more of them are showing it. Here's August and September. Here in September, we can see a lot of indications of a weak El Nino developing here. That's pretty significant, I think. And if we look at the actual, this is the folks from the Scripp Institute. They show a weak El Nino developing during the winter months. And if you look at the actual temperatures, this is August 13th, the subsurface temperatures. You can see that. A lot of cold water up there, no strong signals. But look at September 17th. Whoa, look at the buildup of warm air there. Definitely El Nino coming, not warm air, excuse me, warm water. Definitely a buildup of El Nino coming here as we get down the road here. And uh, I think that's uh, somewhat significant. So that's this week in weather. We'll see if that El Nino develops and what it means for the winter. It would be a good sign for winter, for a colder and snowy than normal winter, if we do get a weak El Nino developing. But right now it's just tentative. We'll see how it shapes up. This is Meteorologist DET. I'll catch you over on Facebook.